Hey, what's up? This is Rob Bailey. Um, I'm really excited today. I've got a, a true guru on the line, <laughs> at least in my, my opinion. Um, I've got Tyrone Shum. Um, he's all the way in Australia. I'm here in San Diego, California in the US. Um, I wanted to interview Tyrone today because um, one of the things that Tyrone has become very, very good at and has begun to t teach others at is just um, how to outsource your business, basically. I don't know how, if there's any w better way to describe it than that. <laughs> and specifically how to outsource your team to the Philippines, which I think is one of the best um, places in the world to outsource a lot of things to. So I want to welcome you here, Tyrone. And um, yeah, thanks for agreeing to do this interview with me. Excellent, well, Rob. Thanks very much for inviting me over. And really, it's a pleasure to be on this call today. So yeah, it's great. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I've been following your work for a while now, um, and I know that you've, you're sort of, um, you know, not. I don't, I don't want to say new to the to the you know to the internet marketing or internet guru type game, but um, you've very quickly in a short period of time established a great deal of success, and you've grown to become somebody that you know people look to as an expert in outsourcing. So, I just wanted to get a little bit on your history and how how you started off. And then talk about sort of like some of your your struggles with outsourcing in particular, um, and then you know talk about maybe how some people, um, you know, you know, in any business really, but maybe touch on real estate. How you think that they could possibly use outsourcing in their business for you? Sure, sure. That, that's a, that's a lot. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all good. Well, for me, I I started off just uh, firstly. I, I went and got a full-time job after uni. I actually went to uni first and uh, was studying computer science at uni. And I did that for three and a half years and graduated with a Bachelor of Computer Science. Once I did that, I went to workforce and worked full-time, worked uh, in real estate. So that's, that's the reason why I got a little bit of a real estate background there. Worked for two agencies out there and uh, yeah, did quite well. I focused on the little niche and just basically built up a, a good customer base with the people in the local area and people came to me. And I think... That's, that's something that I learned over the years of actually working inside real estate was because when I worked in a niche market, I managed to get a lot more sales and a lot more customers to be able to come back to me because people knew for me being the guy who sold units and townhouses in the area. So that was my, my first thing that I did was in real estate. Then after that, I, I moved on to starting to work in a, a managerial position for a retail outlet and then uh, did a little bit of that. I picked up a lot of managerial skills and learn how to run a business and, and grow a business from there. Then decided, uh, it was actually, I, I was taking up a sport in dragon boating for a period of time and in dragon boating, I found that there was a little bit of a missing market or, or a gap in the market for providing dragon boat equipment. And when I found that uh, market, I, I jumped straight into it and, and started selling products online. But prior to that, I, I was actually dragon boating and competing in Australian titles and the national titles for dragon boating. So. For me, it was personal experience. I, I jumped straight in because what happened was I was looking for a paddle for myself and no one in the market actually had a paddle that was available to, to sell to us. That was up at the elite level, the quality level that I was looking for. And those paddles you can buy overseas for about $300 a pop and they're carbon fiber, light paddles and stuff like that. But to import them over here, it costs like $200 on top of the $300 that you'd have to pay for shipping costs and stuff. So by the time you oh, get wow. a paddle in, it's like 500 bucks. So I yeah. saw there was a market no one was doing it, no one was selling this product. So I thought, oh, I'll ask my team and, and see what anyone in the team and also around the community if they wanted to get a paddle. And with demand, uh, it was amazing because everybody wanted one as well too. So we, we ordered a batch in, managed to ship over a, a nice big batch of paddles across and that's where I started the business. It just fell into my lap there. So I was very, very fortunate. But, so just yeah. can you really quickly touch on for those that don't know because I didn't know until I heard you in a couple of other interviews, what, what exactly is Dragon Boating? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I talk about it so much, but I forget to explain it to people who don't know. Dragon Boating is, is where you have 20 people sitting in a boat and you paddle down and race against three or four other boats down, say, a river of, say, 200 meters or 500 meters. And we have a popular event that goes on every year. That This is one of the major events that happen in Sydney. It's called the Chinese New Year Festival down at Darling Harbour. And if people know where the Opera House is in the Harbour Ridge, it's just around the corner from there. It's only like five minutes around the wharf. And that, that event is huge. That You get thousands and thousands of visitors come through that area and a lot of people come down to watch the races. 
and that particular race there it, it's just to symbolize a chinese tradition in dragon boating so yeah cool. it, instead it, it actually got modernized and turned into a western cultural sporting event <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> where, there, where, where there's money to be made, I'm pretty sure Westerners come in and modernize it and uh, yeah, monetize it. <laughs> so. right. Okay, so quickly, just to recap, you, you found a niche in a market where like, you could only get these pieces of equipment sort of like in, in China, like shipped into Australia from China? Uh, actually, no. It was actually imported directly from America, from the States. So, oh, really? yeah, okay. it, it's it's because you have to get a certain license. You have to get a Dragon Boat Federation license. Without that license, you can't sell these products. So that wow. made it even more exclusive for us, making us being the exclusive distributors all across Australia. And with that license, we could import from different suppliers, like from the States, from Canada, from Czechoslovakia, Poland, <laughs> literally anywhere that the sells dragon boat equipment from supplies, that's what we could do and, and that's what we did. We, we exclusively signed those contracts with the suppliers overseas and said we'll distribute exclusively for you in Australia and that's how the dragon boat company got started. Wow. You know, that's interesting. Um, I know that a lot of people, you know, who are skeptical or maybe like um, intimidated by getting online and and starting a niche business or even just like a blog, they're like, you know, what, where do people think of this stuff? I know I've, I found a couple of websites where I just could not believe that, the, you know, somebody would humanly be interested in, a, you know, a subject or a sport or an animal like this. And I'm just like, you know, I see people making money online and that's what fascinates me about the internet is you have these tiny little niche groups of people who um, are way into a subject and there's just like this need that needs to be fulfilled. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the, the way I, I found, like for me, the dragon boat business was something I stumbled across and also that was because I was involved in the sport as well too. So for me, it was very, very easy to be able to see that market. But if for anyone who's actually looking for a niche to start a business in, say for example, the thing I, I would do is just to find out what the market wants first. It, it may be a passion of yours that you might be interested in and you might want to do a bit of research and find out if your passion can be turned into a business or monetize it. But likely, if you if you just put some of your ideas up on the wall and go out and find out if there is a demand for it before you set up any website or import any products or do anything like that, most likely there, there might be a demand for that product. And if it's just test it to make sure it works. And my test was simple, was just to get a bunch of products in and, and sell it to the market. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. It, it, so, so if you go ahead and like do, do a little you know warm research, like ask your dragon boating buddies, hey, if there was a, some way that we could purchase these paddles for, for less, you know, would you be interested? And the obvious answer, I guess, was yes, because yeah. you had to start the business. Absolutely. Okay. I, if for me, it, I didn't actually think about starting a business at first. I was just trying to get my own paddle and trying to get it in for the cheapest cost possible. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it worked out perfectly for me. But then I, I thought, okay, there's more people after who bought that batch whose friends, family, etc., who was paddling in the community and said to me, hey, Tyrone, can you get me a paddle too? How do I get one from you? So right. it just seemed to happen. And then I thought, okay, well, if there's still demand for that, I might as well start up a business and, and start importing these paddles and put it through the company and start selling to the public or to the community. Mm -hmm. And from there, it just grew. So, you know, and then it wasn't that hard because I think a lot of people, once they bought one, the word just got out and yeah, they just came straight back to me. So from there, I turned it into a little website. Um, for me, it wasn't actually that hard because I, I envisioned if I was to run a business, I'd want to run it all online. I didn't want to have a store. I didn't want to get a higher retail outlet. I just put it all online, set up our first website and just said, hey, if you want to buy a paddle, just go to this website, punch it in, go through the checkout process and bang, you're there. And then all I had to deal with was handling dispatchments and, and getting the paddles into the customer's hands as soon as possible. So <laughs> Very smart. So at that time were you outsourcing anything or were you sort of just the main what the main business? What happened was uh, it was fun to start off with, okay? And you, you start working in the business and you, you have a bit of fun doing it. But what happened was it turned into more about me just working 60 hours a week. And at first, it's not too bad because you enjoy doing it. It's a first experience. And you pick up a paddle, you put it in the box and you dispatch it and you think, yes, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> but after doing hundreds of them, <laughs> it gets yeah. a bit monotonous. And, and you, you look at the product and go, I'm so sick of a paddle right now. Just take it away from me. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so what yeah. happened was I, uh, I, I started looking at the business in a different way and I, I said, oh, this is really taking a lot of my time and I wanted to have a change. I wanted to do something a bit different. I didn't want to keep packing paddles. I didn't want to have to handle customer support and all that stuff. And it was just by coincidence, I was walking to Borders one day and I just popped over to the business section just to have a look and browse for some books because I was looking for something to make my life a lot easier. And I just came across this book called The 4-Hour Workweek. And I think a lot of people may have read it. It's by Tim Ferriss. And from the initial opening it, when I read the book, I was just captivated. I was like, wow, Tim's got a massive business that sells protein supplements to, to a very niche market. And I thought, this is quite similar to what I'm doing. I've got a niche market here and I've got a, a dispatch company and all that kind of stuff. And I read through it and I went, wow, he could automate it. He could outsource it and only work four hours a week. So that, that's where it really struck me. I thought, well, couldn't, I could actually do this. <laughs> I could actually yeah. jump in and start to outsource my business. So within a short period of time, what I did was turn my hours from 60 hours down to 10 hours a week and outsourced the majority of the things I did. And I applied the simple principle of the 2080 principle by Pareto's law. And yep. what I did from there was I looked at my business and said, okay, what are the things that I could probably handle and increase sales by focusing on those 20% and then outsource the rest. And outsourcing the rest was the customer support. That was the key thing that I did, number one. And then the second thing was the dispatchment, which took a lot of time, which is taking those paddles, putting it into boxes, getting it to, to the careers and stuff like that. And that really, really freed up my time just to focus on the key clients who were already automated online anyway, but it allowed me to be able to expand the business much quicker, look for new suppliers, negotiate and, and do the fun things I enjoy, which is all the marketing and the sales things that I enjoy doing part of the business. And that's where really the revenue was and that's how I was able to increase the, the company to be able to generate six figures within a very, very short period of time. And if it wasn't for outsourcing, if it wasn't for my virtual assistants, I think I'd probably be still working 60 hours a week and just yes. plowing away. <laughs> yeah, I think I think a lot of people get stuck right there. You know, they think, awesome, I've, I've done it, I've, I've got my own business, I'm making money. But, you know, it's worse than their job. You know, it's worse than like checking out at 5 p.m. and clocking out, you know, doing your punch card and being like, all right, that can relax and just spend time doing whatever I, it is I enjoy. Instead, they're strapped to, you know, the customer service emails after they've done a full day's work or, you know, the server crashing at like midnight <laughs> just happened a couple months ago. <laughs> you know, you're like freaking out because there's nobody else to call. It's just, it's you, you know, everything's you, 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 you. Absolutely. I, th I think that was the one thing as well too was I wasn't, I, even though I came from a computer science background, I had a technical knowledge. I had the skills to be able to set up my own website. I had all that knowledge anyway. But the thing was, I realized it held me back because setting up a website, fixing up bugs in the website was not going to generate any income. It was just a lot of time-consuming things. So that was the other part that I realized that I had to outsource and that's where I got a full-time programmer on board to be able to fix up those problems, handle all those server issues and all those kind of things. And yeah. I, I think that's the one thing I, I need to just mention is that it's important that you do, if you are looking to outsource, if you've got an online business, an internet-based business, you need to look at getting a full-time programmer or staff on board to be able to help you. That, that's one of the key components. Not only that, a virtual assistant will help you manage the day-to-day -day administration side of things. So if you're looking to start to outsource and, and trying to get your business up the ground quickly, those are the two main components I recommend doing first. So it's customer service and... Technical. Oh, sorry. Te technical, yeah, technical stuff like programming, setting up your WordPress blog, setting up your, your website, getting those things done because I can yeah. guarantee you if you try doing those things yourself, it'll probably take you three or four times as long comparison to getting a professional to do it. And it won't yeah. cost much too. That's the thing. You just need to look for the right people in the, in, in the right places. Right. Yeah, that, that was one thing that I struggled with too because like you, I had the education and the know-how, how to put you know, WordPress blog together, go get a theme, upload the content, do all that stuff myself. And I actually got stuck because the, the web hosting provider that I chose had an issue with this thumbnail plugin thing that, and I got stuck on it for a week. And I was like, oh no, I have to move. I have to migrate my whole WordPress blog, all the files on one server over to another. And man, I was pulling my freaking hair out. And <laughs> I know the I feeling, know. I know the feeling. <laughs> But not only did, you know, that wasn't an income producing activity, not only that, I wasted a whole week. It was a time that just crushed me, you know. I mean, not only was I not making money, but 
I spent so much time on it and I was burnt out the next week. I needed a, a day or two off because I was just, you know, I was so frustrated, flustered with everything. So that was the time that I really knew, you know, I was like, okay, I, th that's, it, it was one of the best lessons, but I did it the absolute hardest way. You know, I was like, I need somebody, I know, even though I know how to do that stuff, I need somebody to handle all that for me. It, you know? It's interesting that you say that because I think the biggest lessons that we learn are the hardest lessons. Like, uh, for me, when I first started setting up the Dragon Ball website, it took me probably about two weeks to get it right to, to where I want it to be. And those two weeks were actually, for me, when I first started, I tried to bootstrap everything. I tried to keep the cost down, you know, not hire anyone to help. And I, I look back at that and I go, okay, wow, I should have actually found someone back, back then to, with the knowledge that I know now to be able to help me outsource and would have sped up my process much quicker. And I would have had a lot more time off too. And looking back it's in hindsight but i think it's it's for all the people watching this video or, or listening to this podcast you need to just learn from our experiences saying that get someone as quick as you can to help you and especially if you're looking to set up a website or to run a business online you really need those people because if you've got all that side covered then all you need to focus on is producing income and this is where I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle is right at the beginning they try and bootstrap everything keeping the costs down and nothing wrong with that but you need to see where the sources of income are going to be that you're going to be able to produce quickly and fast to be able to cover those costs so right I think that's great advice um, you know I think and tell me if you agree but I, I think if I had to do it all over again I would have saved you know let's say you're on a bare bones budget you don't have a ton to spend you know, on startup costs, what I would do is, you know, I would work from home. You know, I know you're kind of a minimalist. You have like your MacBook and your, that's and it. Your, you know, webcam and yeah, that's it, right? So, you know, you really just need like a computer with maybe a webcam on it, and uh, and I would take, I would save up enough money to to pay like my web guy or my programmer or what, whatever it is you need uh, solve first in your business, the biggest thing that's going to take the most amount of time and frustration and hours out of your startup and save like, you know, three months worth of that person's salary. And, you know, I know people right now are freaking out because if they've never heard of the Philippines and outsourcing the Philippines, they don't understand how affordable it can be to get mm. quality help. But, you know, that in some cases can be as little as like 600 bucks, right? For three months worth, worth of work. Yeah, for a, full for a full time. I mean, you can get a virtual assistant starting from about two fifty US a month. Anywhere up yeah. up from there, you know, depending on what the skill level, you can really really get a very high quality virtual assistant. And even starting with programmers, you can probably spend up to about four fifty to five hundred dollars US a month. And in my opinion, that is just really really good value because. I'm not not trying to exploit them or anything like that, but like if you were to hire anyone from the US, you'd probably be paying about two grand at least minimum a month to be able to get someone to do that task. And it might not even easily. be for, for full time, it might just be for one off job. Yeah, yeah easily. I mean, I, I got blog quotes that were like six thousand, seven thousand dollars for custom blog design. So that's it's easily achievable in the US for things like that. So, you know, let's talk specifics for a minute. So you might you just touched on, you know, the exploitation thing, which I think a lot of people think when they hear outsourcing, right? Like, oh, you know, it's exploiting somebody. You're not paying them what they're worth. And I mean, maybe you can just describe why that necessarily isn't the case all the time. Absolutely. Um, what what I found is that it's it's all about to do with the currency exchange. Unfortunately, with with the market over in in the Philippines and, and say third world countries, their exchange rate isn't very strong, or their currency isn't very strong. We're not. For us, it's a benefit in many ways, but at the same time, they are getting what the average wage is over there. Well, they're probably getting a little bit more because they're, they're being outsourced to them from us overseas. Let's say, for example, we're looking at hiring a, a person in the United States for about $2,000 a month. If you jump over to the Philippines, yes, it only probably might cost you $300 US a month, but when you convert it over to their pesos money, it's actually the, the equivalent of our $2,000 US a month for what they're getting over there. So. If you try to overpay them or, or give them too much more, like instead of paying them 2,000 pesos, you pay them 10,000 pesos a month, they would probably go, no, 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 I, I don't want to take that because it's just too much. It's just out of their, their belief because over there, they're, they're used to receiving the, the average wage over there. I mean, you can give them bonuses from time to time, but to, to pay them more than that, what they're worth, no one wants to pay them more than they're worth. Uh, 
you'd blow them out of the water and they probably won't even want to work for you because they just don't believe that it's true or capable yeah. of doing it. You probably just would, would never hear from them again because they're like, they just pay me a year's worth of salary in a month and I could take the rest of the year off. <laughs> exactly. That's what could happen. So it's yeah. all, all in proportion, all in relativity. So it's because of the exchange rates. People are, are not used to that fact, but we're not exploiting them. We actually provide them the really good jobs and all my spiritual staff always come back to me and say, thank you very much for providing me this work because it's given them a job. It's it. The market over there is a little bit different to the market in say US or America, uh, Australia and all the other countries. It's because the job market's quite tight and it's very hard for them to find good jobs out there. So that's the reason why they have to be outsourced overseas because we can provide them with some quality work. And even with the bosses over there, they're not always reliable too. Yeah. So maybe we can touch on a couple of other things. You know, I, for me, here's, you know, some of the things that I've experienced with the high, like if you want to call it like the hiring pool, you know, the average, average um, job seeker in the Philippines looking to work online, right? Everybody's college educated, I found, and very well. Sometimes they've got like four or five degrees. That's right. You know? Minimum, um, minimum, at least one degree under their belt. And if you're looking for programmers, they'd have at least a Bachelor of Computer Science or Bachelor of Information Systems. So yeah, at lots, least, lots yeah. Of, I'm sorry. No, lots of IT, yeah. IT educated people, right? Lots of uh, programming and um, computer savvy type, like bachelor degree education over there, right? Absolutely. And they've got so much skill over there that it, it, people are dying to, to try and get them to, to do work for them. And they're looking for jobs out there too, trying to get a, a good job out there to have just a stable income. And like it, it's interesting. It's about the mindset at the end of the day as well. All they want really is to have a really good company that looks after them, pays them on time and, and also consistently as well and provides them with good work to do. And they're very, very loyal people out there and, and the people that I found in the Philippines that I've worked with, they just do a really, really good job. Well, I'll give you an example. Just the other day, my virtual assistant was completing a task for me and for me, I'm, I'm, I'm quite forgetful sometimes as well <laughs> and I, I don't... I don't usually need to really just tell her what to do. I, I just say, could you please transcribe this article for me and or my video for me? And once you transcribe it, I, I forget to tell her that you need to put it up onto a blog and, and do this and that next step. But she automatically does it because I've trained her really well. And I forgot to tell her to, to submit it to a particular directory, but she went ahead and did it. And she said, so I've done it for already for you. Don't need to worry. What's the next task? And I'm like, wow, <laughs> thanks very much, Joanna. It's, it's awesome what you've just done. So I'm like, I, I just find that they're so loyal and they're so helpful and, and they've just got really, really good, uh, really, really good work ethic. That's, that's what I found about them. And just working with them for this period of time, I've just found them to be a really, really good culture to work with. And I've worked with different cultures like working in India and also for China and they just don't show that kind of loyalty. And there's always that, that cultural and language barrier between India and China and Romania and all those other countries. And with Philippines, they're, because the they're Western immigration, uh, very, very well-spoken English and their culture is very similar to the Western culture, it's very easy to be able to communicate things to them. Just like how you and I'm now having an interview and a conversation, I could just hop onto the phone with them, talk to them just like I am right now and just provide them with the right information and they'll just go out and just complete the work for me. And I'm yeah, just so I grateful that they can do that. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I don't know what what led me to believe, you know, what media outlet or educational thing led me to believe that Philippines, you know, would have extremely thick, heavy accents, but they almost have like a, you know, almost like, like a British, um, you know, like what, yeah. what is it? Oh, yeah, a British type of accent, a British West, Western accent, yeah. <laughs> They're like formal, like they call you sir every time. It's yeah. like, dude, you know, I'm so casual, I, it's, it's, I still don't get used to it, but they, every single time, sir, is there anything else? You know, yes, sir, no, sir. It's like the, the level of respect and um, as you already mentioned, the loyalty I'm blown away by as well because, you know, they all they want to do is get the work, do it, do a good job get paid on time, like you said, and they don't really have that sense of, um, you know, like a lot of people say, well, aren't you afraid that they're just going to run off and do what you do and, and go steal your ideas? And I'm kind of like, well, no, you know, I mean, they don't, they don't have the same level of entrepreneurial mindset that necessarily more westernized uh, countries do like in the U S and Australia, you know, 
Um, and almost you have to coach them to think that way, I think. So if you're afraid of them, you know, running off with your, your blog ideas or your niche ideas, it's just so unlikely that it's going to happen. They just want to clock in. They want to do the work. They want to do a great job for you. They want to work for you for years. They want to be a part of a, you know, thing that those are all the things that I've experienced so far. With Absolutely. You, you hit the nail on the head. So it, it's, it's exactly that. And I mean, it, you, you may think that there, there would be people out there who do, do that, like would run away with your ideas. And there may be that small percentage, but it's very, very unlikely. And when you do find that right person, they'll stay with you for the rest of your life, you hope. <laughs> and I, I found that for me, you know, I've, I've had my team for many, many years now and, and they've just been astounding. They've done so much great work for me and I just can't look back at it and say, you know, they're going to run off with my ideas and do anything because I, I do have, I, I give them a lot of privileges and I give them, open up my systems to them and I trust them with my whole, yeah, whole business. So that's why I, I don't really worry much at all. Yeah. That's awesome. I, so maybe you can talk about, um, you know, so you kind of you kind of mentioned at the way beginning of the interview that you've begun to, to outsource some of the dragon boat racing stuff. How did you initially go to find, you know, because I, I think a lot of people think that you just, you know, go to like the Craigslist in Philippines, you open it up and say, hey, I want you to run my business for me. And then, you know, magically for $250 a month, they're making loads of money without doing anything. Well, <laughs> you know, there's quite a bit of work on your side that you got to do to train them. I like how you talked about how you train people. So how right. did you about, you know, starting to outsource and what kind of things did you go through to get it refined and working? Sure. All right. Well, let's just jump back to where we were talking about my story. So I might, might just give you a little bit more about from where there because my story wasn't... Uh, you can say it wasn't the smooth sailing story. <laughs> yeah. I, had a, I had a lot of issues and problems at the VD. All right, so after I, I, I found people to outsource for me and uh, help me set up with the Dragon Boat business, it, it seemed like it was quite smooth sailing. What I did was after reading Tim Ferriss's book, I followed and went to find people from India and I took his advice, hop onto Elance and just find people on Elance. Big mistake there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, so what happened was I posted up ad on Elance and then once I posted them up an ad for Virtual Assistant, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll just wait for the responses. The first people that I got to respond were people from India. If I remember, it was from Sri Lanka, uh, no, Bangladesh. Bangladesh was the first people that, that applied for my job position and they offered $4.50 an hour and I said, bang, wow, that's awesome. That's, <laughs> that's within my range. I thought that's great. So I gave them the first task and I thought, yeah, all right, I'll follow his steps of what Tim has said and Tim said, make sure you define each individual task, give them a time frame and make sure that they complete it back within a short period of time. Yes, they, they went away and, and got my work done but the problem was, was that they didn't do it properly and they didn't do it right and even with the training I provided for them, I thought, how hard could this be? You yeah. know, I, I'm, I'm even stepping through with them, clicking through the mouse, showing them how to do this, etc. and they still weren't doing it right and I, I realized after a period of time, what they were doing was they were actually trying to bill me for more hours. <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't pretty smart at doing that. And yeah. it turned from two hours, three hours, and it just kept adding up. And I just realized that they were not doing the work properly and they were just trying to build more hours. And in, in their good right, I think they were just trying to make a living. But they were not yeah. just doing the work that I asked them to do. And we just came back with so many problems. That was the first biggest mistake there was I tested them, but I didn't, I didn't find the right cultural fit for us. And it was because of the communication barrier because he said, please do this for me and please do it this way. Complete it within an hour and send the job back to me. Okay, great. But what happened was, yes, yes, sir, I'll do it. But they didn't understand what I was trying to get them to do. And what they'll do is they didn't ask because if they had any problems, they didn't ask. They just did it they, what they thought and then submitted it back to me. After about three or four different attempts with different Indian virtual assistants, I was very, very fortunate that a Filipino assistant applied for my position. And this was my Filipino that I've stuck with since then. <laughs> and wow. Yeah. And, and this was a virtual assistant company that they provided to me, a virtual assistant. And for me, they came to me and said, Sir, I could probably do this for you for $3 an hour. Oh, wow. That's even cheaper than the ones in India. So yeah. I, I jumped at that opportunity. And what happened was it was a complete uh, fresh breath of air because what happened was I sent them a task. I specified what I wanted. And they got to complete it and they got to complete it right as well, exactly the way I wanted. So it was, 
it was a real big trial and error for me. And I realized after that experience with people in India and also a few people in China I tried as well, I realized the Philippines was the way to go. And it was because after learning a little bit more about their culture, learning about how they work, they really opened up my eyes and realized, wow, it, it, it's, it's all about the communication and about the culture, about the loyalty and, and their honesty. And they just come back to me and what would happen is I'd give them a task. If they didn't understand, they'd actually come to me and say, sir, I don't think I can do this. I'll try my best, but uh, can you give me a little bit more time? Most of the time, I'd say yes. But at the same yeah. time, I'd say, what kind of training do you need from me? And they'll tell me. So they'll yeah. come back to me and say, I need this, need that. So I'll provide that all for them and they'll get the work done. And since then, with all the training material that's in place, they just go and refer to that material. And all I have to do is just really sit back and just monitor and make sure that they do things right. Nowadays, I don't really even need to monitor them. They just go through. If they've got a problem, they'll just send it to me and then usually they'll figure it out <laughs> by then. Wow. So, yeah. And, and that's the benefit of, of having a long-term relationship with your VAs, right? I mean, you can't expect to hire somebody project by project and have that type of, you know, like just understanding with somebody in your business. It's, I mean, it, it would like be having a temp in your office every day or every month, you know, a different one every month. You, you, there's just no possible way the person no. to learn what your tendencies are with your business. Definitely not. One other thing I want to mention as well is with the virtual assistant company, they provide virtual assistant backup. So if, say for example, your VA goes off and needs to take annual leave or, or gets sick or, or whatever, this virtual assistant company always backs me up with another one. So if they're off for a week, they'll always have another virtual assistant trained up with a similar skill and will just take over my business and keep running it for me because I, I've always got a backup assistant there just in case anything happens. So that's the beauty about going through a company. But also too, the important thing is, is the way you communicate with them, how you set up the training system. For me, when I first started, this was not even talked about in the Tim Ferriss book, <laughs> was, was setting up and, and just emailing people back and forth. And when you're dealing with one person, it's okay and you, you email back and forth and you can sort of track things. But once you're dealing with two, three, ten people, it gets really, really messy and you just can't manage all of them. And this is where the project management system comes into play and this is where I, I realized I need to set up a system in place to be able to do this. Nowadays, I have a, a really, really powerful project management system which is I use called Active Collab and I have everything centralized there and managed in that one place. Another system people also talk about is Basecamp HQ and a lot of top internet affiliate marketers use that as well. So check those two systems out. If you're looking to outsource and you need a project management system in place, those are the two software systems I recommend to use and will really, really streamline your system and allow you to just, yeah, have everything run like cogs in the system properly <laughs> without having you to spend so much time emailing back and forth. It is. I found, um, especially if you're working with spreadsheets <clears throat> and you start emailing them back and forth, it's really hard to know if there's a lot of data in the spreadsheets, which uh, one is the most version using email. So I use Basecamp personally, and I really like the feature where they overwrite the files and they've got a file history that all right there. So if you need to go back and see all the versions, you know, and you're completely right. I have about, I think about 10 people in my system and some of them are old and some of them just work like every once every couple months, but um, it's all right there in, in Basecamp and it's web-based. So you could literally be like in an internet cafe halfway around the world and log into your system and see what's going on. So absolutely, uh, I found great value in that. And, I sometimes I even get a little bit, you know, a little bit militant with the way that people, you know, I'm like, don't place that there, place that here. <laughs> the, having a system is so important. I mean, don't you agree with, with that statement as far as, you know, working remotely with people? Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. One thing I, I found, I remember one of my students, uh, this was going back at, when students first started my course was they were asking me this question was how do I let go of my work and how do I just trust them to, to be able to get it done because what was happening, this student was having her a virtual assistant email her every time they needed a password and a login information for a website and she couldn't trust that it'd be safe to put onto the system. So I said to her, look, create a, a secure area inside your project management system just specifically for logging information and passwords so they can always access it when they need to. And because every single virtual assistant has a password and login, everything's all secure to access online. 
therefore allows you to free up your time and you don't have to keep checking your email if they need any information or so forth. It's all in the centralized location. And I think yeah. that that's the key thing people just don't realize is that the project management system is a centralized system where you have everything there from your projects to your login passwords to, to everything that they need so that they can just run the project without your involvement. And all you want to do is sort of just sit on the outside just to make sure the cogs are running. You don't have to be involved in the project. You don't have to do the project. You just let them do it. All you have to do is just monitor and make sure things are running. And that that's yeah. the most important mind shift set that I think people need to do when they, they're starting to expand their business and, and becoming a, a greater entrepreneur. Let the business oh, run. I completely agree. I, I think that a lot of people who fail at outsourcing initially don't have a system. You know, like they don't, they just know how they do it and they haven't, um, you know, broken it out and really done like a step by step on what their process is for making money. And I, I think that it's it's a struggle for people because they, they don't think about it in, the, in those terms and they'll read a book like The 4-Hour Workweek or another good one that I read was uh, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Oh, yes. I've read that too. That's a great book. It's a fantastic read to break that mind, mindset that you're talking about and shift over to entrepreneurial thinking. I mean, it's another thing to implement it. I, I find myself struggling with, you know, <laughs> with actually implementing and letting go of things. It's a hard thing for entrepreneurs because a lot of times their business is their baby, right? Absolutely. But I think it's imperative. And, and actually hiring a VA has helped me do that because I was horrendous when I started off. <laughs> and that's why I started, you know, seeking knowledge on it. And I found your website, I think through, through R. Stark's blog. But, um, you know, I, I was seeking education because I, I knew I was doing something wrong. I just didn't know what, you yeah. know. And the the biggest thing was that I hadn't broken anything out into steps and systematized it yet. Um, so I think a lot of people right now, by this time, they're watching and they've, they've got a lot of questions, you know, like where do you find VAs for 250 an hour? How do you, you know, um, train them? How do you, you know, what types of things do you put in your project management system to do the things that you just described? So maybe you can talk a little bit about mass outsource and what that does for people. Sure. Well, oh, actually, I might just answer some of the questions that you've asked me where to find oh, people sure. and also some systems and stuff like that just to give some t t tips and stuff to the audience to listen to as well. One thing yeah. is uh, I recently heard that bestjobs.ph has opened up their system to allow people from outside the US to be at access now. So I'd recommend hopping onto bestjobs.ph. If you know what job websites are like, say for example in Australia, we have a job website called seek.com.au and that job website is where people go on and list the application or list the profiles there and the resumes for employers to be able to find them so they can hire them. Bestjobs.ph is just like that in the Philippines. The only difference is that you're getting resumes from the Philippines and that's a really, really good resource to check out and I highly recommend to go there and have a look. You can easily get yourself a really good full-time virtual assistant from there or program or etc. or whatnot. I also have a friend uh, in, in the Philippines who, who manages a team with over 200 plus staff and his name's Chris Ducker. He, he's launching a service uh, pretty soon as well but I'd recommend checking out his blog at Virtual Business Lifestyle. I'm giving Chris a big plug right here right now, so <laughs> he'd appreciate that. Uh, yeah, check out his blog. He, he's got a lot of good information there, but he runs a company with 200 plus virtual assistants as well. And wow. yeah, he can definitely help you there. He, he, he does charge a finder's fee or spotter's fee to be able to find virtual assistants for you, but he when he does find it, he really, really provides really, really good resources of, of virtual assistants. So if you don't want to go and find it yourself, he'll, he'll provide that all for you there. And I, I found also a programmer through him as well. So he, he's helped me out a lot there. Um, so those are the two resources I recommend checking out. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too much because you know, it get, gets mind boggling. And then was... the next thing I want to talk about is the systematization of a project management system, the question you asked about that. Now, um, <clears throat> first thing you would probably want to do is if you're saying you're, you've got one virtual assistant or two virtual assistants, it's a good idea to probably get started on setting up a project management system up at the beginning. And even if you think you, you might not need it, it's actually good to have in place because it trains you to offload a lot of your work and, and have it all centralized in one location. So setting up a system, I'd probably allow for at least up to a month to get it all set up. Like not, not to say that it'll take you a month, it'll probably take you about a few days just to have the system implemented, but just to really get to know the system, get your staff up and running, allow for at least a month. and 
by then they've got all the training material they've got all the user access information inside they've got the projects and so forth but just to really get started on getting one and the reason why I use Active Collab is because Active Collab I can host on my own server and secondly I have more control over it as well too that's the reason why I choose it but if you don't want to buy Active Collab as a once-off fee you can use Basecamp HQ which is what Rob uses as well too and I think it's just a monthly fee to be able to access that for, for people and that they host everything all there online for you too but I highly highly recommend just getting a project management in system in place and once you've done that the most important thing I think you need to do is just train your virtual staff up properly get your systems in place by noting down everything that you do document everything so let's just say for example in my business uh, a lot of people come to my blog to check out my video posts and, and get all that. Now, I do all of the video presentations as you probably see there because it's obviously yep. me, but I don't do all <laughs> the other back end stuff. What I mean by back end is this I don't, I, don't do, I don't transcribe, I don't post a blog post, I don't uh, submit it to directories. All those things are all done by my virtual assistant. So, as soon as I finish a video, and it's finished, I get it uploaded onto the web and then from there, there's a whole process that they follow, a systemized process. And if you can document that whole system, for example, and put it onto the project management and they watch it, review it, they know what to do exactly, they can always come back to that. And if you train one person to do it, then you train another person to do it, it's all there centralized. And that's the power of actually doing it only once, training them up once and you can duplicate and leverage and that's something I really, really highly recommend to do first. Now, if you don't want to do it, that's where Mass Outsource Mastermind comes in is that I've got all the training videos inside there from anywhere from SEO all the way to training up a virtual assistant, blog posting, article marketing, all those things. And, and that's the beauty of, of uh, being part of that course is because I've got all those training materials provided for you because I use them daily and, and that's something that my virtual team uses as well too. Yeah, so you can just take the shortcut or the fast track with yeah. mass outsource and just kind of, you know, basically take your business template for outsourcing these tasks and apply them to, you know, your own stuff, whatever that is. I mean, it could be anything really, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to give my, 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 my product a little bit of a plug now, but uh, I, I'll just tell you what's inside anyway. Uh, what, yeah, what's, in, what's inside Mass Outsource Mastermind is that uh, you do get access to a lot of resources inside from bestjobs.ph. And, and so forth and also other websites as well to get access to lots of different resumes and, and also job applicants and so forth. But not only that, I do provide you all the technical stuff like how to be able to communicate and, and negotiate your salary with your virtual assistant, all the templates to be able to set up a contract with them. All those things are all provided in for you. But not only that, there are also training materials and training videos in there. As I said, article marketing, SEO, uh, link building, all those videos specifically for internet marketers are all built inside the training program. You've also got uh, live teleconferences with me. So once a month we have uh, live teleconferences where you can just hop on, ask me one-on-one -on -one questions. So it's one-on-one -on -one coaching. There's a members forum area. Uh, there's bonuses. There's quite a lot of stuff that's inside there. And you'll get the videos at least once a week or you can get it all up front if you want to just pay upfront payment of it. So yeah, and the course runs awesome. over four months as well. I should mention that. So once you get it, you get lifetime access. Awesome. So you don't have to bite it all off in one sitting and try to chew it all up and you know implement. <laughs> You've got like four months to train yourself, implement the system step by step, etc. Yeah, kind of how it works. Absolutely. And one last thing I forgot to mention as well is I do give you guys a project management system as well. So the Active Collab system that I use, it's been customized specifically for everyone. So if you join the course, you'll get that as well included inside the package. So I think if, for example, Active Collab costs, I think, 200 or $300 just to be able to buy outright. If you join up to a course and you get access to it, it's $197 per month for four months. And once you get access to that and you finish the course, you have lifetime access. So you get to keep the project management system, you get to keep access to teleconferences and so forth. So I've tried to make it as simple, but also as effective and easy for you step by step. Yeah, I think it's a great value. I mean, I've, I've wasted way more than 800 bucks on you know, shoddy, you know, <laughs> shoddy tries it, it, hiring virtual assistants for various projects. So, I mean, I, just having it the step-by-step -step to not only train, but, you know, I, I haven't even done 
a lot of the things that you just mentioned, like the article marketing and that I just don't have time, you know? Like yeah. All the viral <laughs> I mean, who has... I don't know anybody who does that for every single post on their blog. No, you, know? you, you don't. I, I know from experience, I just don't have time. Like you may think it'll only take you 10 minutes to post up a blog, but once you go through the process, it takes my virtual assistant probably anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half to get all those things done. Imagine that kind of time that you could save by having all those training videos in place. And once you have those in place, you just let them run and do the things, which means you can free up your time to do other things that you enjoy. You know? There you go. I love it. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, I'm in real estate investing and, um, you know, I do a little bit of information, product development and, and uh, internet marketing stuff. But, you know, how I'm earning my living right now is is through real estate. And a lot of my subscribers, readers might be, um, you know, either investors or just, you know, agents or some other type of real estate related game. So could you just fire off a, a few things that you think that those folks might be able to outsource in their business? Because, you know, obviously you've had some experience in real estate yourself. Definitely. Well, when I was working in real estate, I wish I had a virtual assistant. The amount of time. Well, let, let's just say, for example, if you're a real estate agent, talking from a real estate agent's point of view, your scheduling, your administration tasks, all those kind of things, mail outs, sales letters, etc. Those things can be all outsourced to a virtual assistant overseas. But if you're an investor, when I, like I was before as well too, and I still am, uh, with real estate, it, it's there's a lot of nitty gritty things that you need to do and a lot of the back end stuff which you can systemize say for example if you're looking to do research on a deal um, let's say for example you're looking to, to contact an agent and you wanted to get contracts and then from there you want to set up the, the deal to be able to negotiate you can probably handle the negotiation process because that's where you're probably strong at or you need to do but all that back end stuff where you need to find the deal research and all that kind of stuff you can easily outsource that or to virtual assistants and even if you want you can even have your virtual assistants contact the agents directly for you and get the deals for you and set it up and then all you need to do is walk in provide the cash and you're done <laughs> there you go I, I mean seriously I, I know investors who have done this and continue to do it and the people who I've heard that have the most success have um, teams in the Philippines I know a guy who's got one one um, virtual assistant and all she does is outbound lead generation so that's he's pretty Craigslist makes phone calls and you know for for those of you who are worried about you know the accent or people thinking that this person is across this you know the ocean you know most like 90 percent of the virtual assistants that i've talked to in the philippines have that you might not think that they were like natively born in the u.s necessarily but you might think that they're like an asian american educated in like you know britain or something mm. But you would never immediately assume like their accents aren't so heavy that you're like, whoa, where is this person from? You know, like their accents are really slight and their English is very, very good, right? That's right. What you'll find as well too is if you if you call them and interview them and speak to them, you'll be able to find out which virtual assistant would be suitable for you. Like for me, I, I'm, I'm actually just about to set up a process where I'm going to have my virtual assistants contact local businesses to do some marketing for me because we're, we're going to be doing a lot of focus on helping small businesses grow their business online and so forth. And I've interviewed a few people to be able to do that and I, I've almost found someone who, who is pretty much the same speaking like me. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, they, they, they're they very, very good out there. If you just hop onto Skype and interview them and you, you do ask them the right questions, you will find the right person who has a very good nature and speak like us as well. And you don't need them to be perfect, but as long as they can understand and the English is good, most people are forgiving. And I can guarantee you, people in tel telephone companies like over in, in AAPT or, or Telstra over here in Australia, they outsource all their call centers every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and you can tell oh, it, yeah. is, it is in, in India and Philippines, but they're forgiving because we, we as customers just want to get the resource. And if they look after you, you've got no problems. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's anybody who's ever not done a deal in real estate because person on the other end has a slight accent you know i mean <laughs> that, that, you know it's the i it's just crazy the things that i hear when i tell people that i outsource this type of stuff it's like you know how do you trust them you know don't, can you tell they're foreign it's just you know, they just need to, to do it just do it <laughs> you know? i i agree completely so that kind of you kind of touched on something was that 
Was that maybe your new product that you're working on coming out with? Because... I, I, I won't say anything at the moment because it's not finished yet, but uh, I am releasing some more products upcoming. So yeah, just, just keep coming over to my blog at tyronshum.com and I, I'm pretty sure once it gets released, I'll, I'll let everyone know. But for the moment, it's under the wraps, but yeah, it's, it's a new product coming out soon. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, for everyone out there who's still on the call, you made it through a lot of great content already, but um, I subscribe to Tyrone's newsletter. He's got tons of free tips. He gives you more information than you could ever want to implement even. Um, he gives you bit by bit so you can take pieces of it and implement it in your business, but most of the time he gives you free tools to use on the internet, make running your business a lot smoother, and I think you are you have one of the better newsletters out there right now because it's not Excellent. full of know sales pitches you know you actually give me stuff that i can use so um you know i i highly recommend at least subscribing to his his newsletter his blog uh, and also to check out massoutsource.com um did you have a, a link i know mass outsource has been shut down because of that capacity but you said you might be able to give my my readers and subscribers a, a special link to go to yep what I'll do is I'll, I'll add that in the video for you. So when you see this video, when, if you arrive to the end, there's a link at the bottom of this video and also I'll, I'll put it here. At, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, yeah, I'll put it right there and uh, you'll be able to just, uh, yeah, be able to go straight to that link and access the Mass Outsource. It's only for members for uh, Rob's group and it's, it's a private access. So exclusively just for you guys out there because it's currently closed to the public. I won't be relaunching Mass Outsource anytime soon, but once I, I do, I'll let you know. But for, for anyone who wants to join up now, uh, I'll be providing exclusive access for a short period of time. Awesome. I appreciate that, man, because I've been wanting to get in there, and I, I haven't even gotten in yet. So you'll have at least one subscriber to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> no worries. Um, all right. Anything else you want to touch on before we wrap the call, Tyrone? All I want to just say is a lot of people get stuck on or hung up on the idea of how to do it and, and, and just what to do and so forth. If you want, there, there's a step-by-step -step tutorial on massoutsource.com. If you subscribe to that, there's 10 free videos which show you step-by-step -step on how to do it. Uh, from there, you should be able to be able to outsource and uh, get started straight away, but just don't get hung up on the idea of not sure what to do, how to go about doing it, but just get started and take action today. That's the thing I can just recommend to take away is just take action straight away because if you've heard something that, that's valuable on this call and you find that outsourcing is something that touches your heart and can really, really help you, just take action now because I bet you, I guarantee you after a week or two, you'll forget about this and you just put it off because you won't do it. But I, I can truly say from my own experience and, and business, outsourcing has been the way to go to be able to grow my business faster and quicker than anything else. So if you did see something that you, you can really take away and implement, just do it right now. Don't stop. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I, I think it's imperative that people start with something small and just do it. You know, start with one thing, outsource it. They're going to learn a ton and uh, that'll at least get them moving in the right direction, right? Absolutely. So yeah, just take, take the advice from Rob and ourselves. So <laughs> go for it. There you go. <laughs> awesome thanks so much for your time Tyrone I really appreciate it man you're welcome thanks very much for having me on the call Rob great to be here yeah. well I'll be back again sometime soon sounds good <laughs> thanks mate All right. appreciate it